Hello again, gang. K.R. King here, helping you homebrew your own D&D campaign. So I'm outside once again. As I mentioned, my lighting setup is down as I'm moving. Uh, but I'm going to be moving back inside the computer, as it were, because as promised today, I'm going to talk about the Wonder Draft software package. You know, I really like this package because one, it's a one-time purchase of $30. That's all you need. They update the software pretty regularly. And two, it has the features and things you need to create really interesting uh, fantasy maps. So today I'm going to go over kind of the basics of setting up, you know, a drawing and putting the land on. And then I'm going to concentrate on scaling because, you know, we all love to draw maps and have all these features and deserts and mountains. And then we get this thing and like, how big is this? How long would it take the players to travel over? Is it useful in terms of running either a tabletop or virtual tabletop campaign? So I'm going to show you a technique that I use using an existing map, using the tracing feature in Wonder Draft to look at that and see how the scale would be for something, say, the size of England. I have a map of England, Ireland, and Scotland. And then how you can concentrate on an area, bring it up so that your hex structure, which is what the players use to determine scale, is uh, efficient in terms of travel. So let's get started with Wonder Draft. All right, so the first thing we do is we open up a new file in Wonder Draft. And as you can see right here, it's got width and height in pixels. Uh, you can choose different sizes here. Uh, and they, as you can see, the pixel size changes according to those. Uh, if we go to this, it's got a much bigger area, this 4K Ultra HD. These are some 300 dot per inch. And when you click these, you'll see that the pixel rate changes. Uh, for this example, I'm just going to use the full 1920 by 1080, kind of a standard size. The theme comes up paper, but we can change that. All right, and it loads these default symbols. I also have some, uh, you know, packs here. Okay, again, if you press control and your mouse uh, roller like this, and if you press the mouse roller down, the hand comes up and you can go back and forth like that. Uh, the theme here, I'm going to go up here to this theme. Uh, this is adventure. If we go, we can have black and white. Uh, we can have uh, this eastward. And you know, I'm, I'm going to go down to worn just to show this. This will be, unless you state otherwise, this will be the sea, color of the sea. And the uh, land masses will be another color. So what this is, is a landmass wizard. This makes things for you automatically. So you just say generate and it does this. It creates this landmass. Uh, again, contingent. Uh, we have this sort of thing. Uh, I like to build my own. This is something you could do for a quick thing, right? It'll just generate these. You can go down, here's archipelago, an island system. And what you can do is change these, the roughness uh, let's go like that. Very simple. Now we have roughness. And what that does is uh, these borders become very uh, irregular, very fractal. So again, if you want to play with these, this is Atoll, you know, just like in the out in the ocean somewhere. Uh, what do we have? Here's a whole world. Again, if you want to do that, I like to just generate my own. Uh, so in order to get rid of that, what I'm going to do is hit my erase button and I go all the way up like so, and I'm just going to erase those. All right, so now I just have this. So I'm going to start creating land. And what I'm going to do for this example, I'm just going to show you how I start off creating a land mass the ideas that I get, you know, and I usually just start with a kind of central mass. So I'm going to go with just the standard smooth sided. All this controls is size. So if you go like this, all right, this is a very simple land mass. Okay. If we go up and close like this, you'll see that this depth change, you have a border here for the actual border of the land, a little depth change. If we go in here, we can change this to different blends. That's kind of an irregular kind of fading in and out, uh, uniform, uniform blend. Uh, 
outline, which is what the default is. Three tiered kind of different depths. Uh, this is a hatch pattern dash. I'm going to go with three tiers. And you can alter that with these, whatever you like, you know, in terms of the land mass and whatnot. And then if you want to erase this, right, same sort of thing, you know, Alt will lower the size of that, right? And then anytime you want, if you say Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. Okay, that's the erase feature. If I want to make this more interesting, this, this coastline here, this right here, which is the raised land mass, and you'll notice up here, instead of just the brush size, it also has this roughness key. And what that does is create coastline that's a little more accurate. See this? This is something more. And if you increase the roughness, it gets very strange, very sort of fractally, which is, you know, again, what land masses are more like. So what I like to do is once I have a basic shape, I'll just go through like this, maybe make some little shifts and changes. Maybe go like this over here and just make the coast more like real coastline, right? Just go along and just kind of come out here. Whatever it is that, you know, you feel like it's, again, it's really simple to do. And I'm just going to go around first, get that all in there. So I've got that fractal type shape. And this sort of looks like a buffalo or something. If I go the opposite, that's lower the land mass. And it just does the same thing. Again, the roughness, you know, if I want that smoother or rougher, right? And I can just go in here, you know, however I want to do this. These are, and this is all seawater. Fresh water is a different tool. This is all just inlets. Maybe I'll make an island there. Again, if I want an island out here, I just go to here. All right, I can create an island. I can create little islands, a chain of them. Uh, I can create another landmass. Again, if I larger. Notice it's giving these little, because my brush is so rough, those will disappear if you take off that roughness. And maybe something out here. Right. All right. And maybe uh, I want this to be a little. Whatever you, you know, suits your fancy in terms of making this more interesting. Oddly shaped. Uh, and then I'm going to go and remove and kind of go like that. Now notice I got this quite big. If I control Z, I want to make that a little smaller, like so. All right. But the question is, you've got this map. How big is this area? Is this the size of Antarctica? Is it the size of Asia? Africa, is it just like an island? We don't know. We don't have any sense of scale from this map. As I had shown in an earlier video, I had a map of England and a map of Europe, both on a 1920 by 1080 pixel map. Clearly the scale was different. So how do you think about scale? Well, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna start, I'm not gonna save this, I'm just gonna say, discard, new, again, 1920 by 1080. And I think the theme I will pick is, let's see, how about imagination? I kind of like that. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this overlay feature. I'm going to pick a file. And I'm going to go to, let's see here. This was from the last video. I have a map of England, okay, which is fit to this size. And this is an overlay. If I go like this, it disappears. If I go like this, it appears. 
When I draw on the map, I'm not drawing on the overlay, I'm drawing on my, so if I go like this, land, and I pick this, and I begin to draw, it's on this map, if I go back to my overlay, and I show this, there's England there, okay? Now I'm going to control Z and get rid of that, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this map of England and Ireland and a little bit of the French coast here to give an idea of how to, how to think about scale. Okay, because of course I know how big England is in terms of miles. So what I do here is, what I typically do is I just start off and I kind of fill in with a large brush some of these areas as best I can now there are some, um, if we look in here, there's some lakes and things. Maybe I'll fill those in, maybe not. There's up in Scotland. No, here's Norway up here. And here's France. Okay. And then I'm going to get smaller with this. And I'm going to get close, like so just as close as I can to the edges with the smooth. Then I'm going to go in and use the more fractally rough, you know, and how much I want to get close to this. Again, this map is for educational purposes. This island's out here. All right. Oops. Control Z, kind of get rid of that. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get that a little bit closer there. I'm going to use my rough tool, and I'm going to start filling in this outer map. Here's my rough tool. Pick the size, go in, and I'm just going to go like this, just like so. Is it the exact coastline of England? No, but it's going to be similar enough in shape that you should be able to recognize that. Oops, not that big. There's Cornwall. Like so. Okay like so. So let's look at that. If I take my overlay and I turn that down, now you can see I've got this in here. If I don't want these little, I guess, it, does it have islands? It doesn't look like it, it has a, so I'm just gonna get rid of those. But there is a, you know, a similarity. And the thing about this is you do get better at it as you go along at kind of matching that by going up next to it and just kind of like this, right? Okay. And if you get to where, oh, I'm not sure what... I'm not trying to make this exact. I'm just trying to make it close. All right, so I'm going to go through and do this. Go fast.
All right, so if I take this overlay off, there we have a map, you know, approximately England. I'm going to add some, uh, let's just add a little bit of land up here. Like that. So, uh, I'm going to just, I'm just going to have Norway like that. I don't know. Okay. But how, what's the scale here? How do I know how big that should be? How we determine that is with some kind of pattern here, some kind of hex pattern, right? We establish these hexes and then how far across is that hex, right? And this hex can go, you know, anywhere down to 16 is the smallest, okay, all the way up to 512. Really, England and I, you know, in like two giant hexes. So if I said this, for example, I'm crossing from here to here. How can I determine that? Here is a package uh, distance calculator. Uh, I come up here to England. I say, let's say, what uh, from Liverpool to a little here. 125 miles okay so if I go back to this if I take that down to let's go to 28 28 size so now that distance one two three four five six seven eight nine that would be about 15 miles per hex. So if I was using this, depending on my movement per day, now I typically use five or six miles hexes, so this is gonna be a little bit too big. The reason I like 28 over here is because that translates well into fantasy grounds that I use. Now suppose I wanna get this map uh, where the hex size is gonna be more compatible with my traveling with a group. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create up here in menu a detail map. Now, this map is, I'm going to select an area, but first, what you want to do is play with this times. How much bigger are you going to zoom? And what you'll find is, you've got to play with this, then for this map three times, and then I'm going to select an area, like so, and I'm going to create. Okay, now I have a detailed map. Notice how big these hexes are. So I'm going to go back, I am going to say 28, and I'm going to look at this distance here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay? And I want 5 mile hexes. Let's look, this is our map, and we will go from, where is this, here to here, and we're looking at about 35 miles, which is five miles a hex. That's the scale that I want to use. So what I can do is save this file as detail uh, Cornwall. Okay, now I've got that file saved. All right, I'm going to export that file. I will call this detail, oops, detail Cornwall. Like so, I will go to my images here, import this, ping file, detail Cornwall, there we go. Let's look at this again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if I put my map on, 28. I guess I should make those hexes. And we'll move that into position. And there we go. We've got our hexes and we've got a map that's more appropriate to moving the players around. All right, so next I'm gonna go back into Wonderdraft in my next video. I'm gonna create a continent. I'm gonna use a lot more of the features of Wonderdraft, you know, in terms of, you know, the symbols for things like mountains, uh, rivers, uh, freshwater sources also show you how you can use the coloring features, the paintbrush uh, to emphasize those symbols. And then I'm going to take that continent feature and show you how to isolate different areas as I did on the sample map of uh, England uh, so that you can concentrate on areas for movement. 
But until then, if you like what you've seen, please subscribe to my channel. I'm always looking for more. Leave some comments because, as you know, I always return those. But most importantly, my friends, keep playing D&D. &D. Tell somebody else about it.